Good morning. Welcome to Wixom's Breakfast Church. It's another Sunday morning. It's 8.15 and we're delighted that you're joining us, whether you're joining us this morning on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, just a reminder, we're going to keep saying it, that uh, if you uh, are watching us on YouTube and you want to put us in large screen on your television, then go and have that opportunity to cast uh, us uh, to your TV. And you may want to do that uh, through YouTube. They might not want to do that. They might want us very small in the corner. Well, I hope not, because I hope that uh, we're together as our families, because that's what uh, Wixom's uh, Breakfast Church is all about. It's about trying to meet together on a Sunday morning for a bit of fun and hopefully uh, an opportunity for us to, to meet with God as well. Brilliant. So today's a really special day, isn't it? It is. And that's why I, this morning I wanted to put on my special shirt. We look like we're stripey and stripey it's a bit stripey stripey too but, much stripey stripey <laughs> well we are going to kind of become some kind of double act i keep thinking every time i watch us back on a sunday morning because again this is not live when i watch us back i suddenly keep thinking we are going to be kind of come the next little and large no comment <laughs> so this morning is a special sunday you're wearing your special shirt because i am because it is advent sunday which in many many churches is the start of the new church's year you know whereas lots of other people are thinking that we start the new year on january the first or teachers think that you start the new year on september the fourth indeed <laughs> as the church the church thinks you started on advent sunday because you go through the preparation which is what advent is all about and we'll be thinking about uh, this time um, and we go through the preparation into the birth of Jesus and beyond. And then we realise that Jesus is king, which is what we were thinking about last week. And then we do it all over again. And for many churches, purple is the season of Advent. And so for me, that's why I'm wearing my purple uh, shirt this morning. I'll endeavour to wear it every Sunday between now and Christmas. Well, I'll be wearing it on Christmas uh, Eve, which is our Christmas special event. I'll wait for you to see that because I think I've got something up my sleeve. Great. Okay, now you had a story you wanted to share with us this morning. Right? I have, because as I say, this is a this is Advent, and you know I think sometimes we we can get lost about what Advent's really all about. And I love the fact that there's a story told of an out of work actor, and this out of work actor Becky gets a part in a West End play. He has. There's not much of that going on right now. No, there isn't. Pantomimes is another thing, but we'll have that another time. He's behind you. Anyway, this out-of-work actor gets a part in a West End performance. He has five words to say that are crucial to the whole uh, play. And his five words, words are, hark how the cannon roars. Hark how the cannon roars. Five words, that's all it is he's got to say. And so... He's trying to work out if he can get this right. You know, if you get the principal role in a, in a play, you're going to get work forever. So if you get it right, I can make it into the big time. So I'm practising these lines. Hark how the cannons roar. He paces up and down his flat in London trying to get the words right. He gets it all the way right, all the way through the uh, rehearsal period. It comes to the opening night of the play. He's standing in the wings and the cue comes. Bang! And he comes on stage and says, what was that? <laughs> and that for me is the reminder that we're getting ready for Christmas. It isn't Christmas season yet. We won't be uh, thinking about Christmas yet. But I know many people have got, we thought about it last week, that many people have already got their Christmas decorations up. But for us as Christians, Advent is a time where we think about getting ourselves ready so that Christmas doesn't just come upon us like that. And that's why I love that story of the, the out of work actor. Brilliant. Now, it isn't Christmas, you're right, it is Advent. But our celebrations do take place over this whole period. And there are things that we would normally do in December. So we would normally have our really, really big, messy church for Christmas. And obviously we can't do that this year. Last night we had our Advent messy church and we are going to have a Christingle messy church and all of these things are happening at home so keep your eyes peeled for that and the other thing to mention is that normally we would have a nativity both at little stars and at messy church 
and we have our own take on the nativity don't we we do i've wanted to play the role of one of the three kings but i don't think that's what you mean no that's not what we mean so normally it's every church's um headache to figure out how to divvy out the plots uh but we have our own technique which is if you want to be mary be mary if you want to be a sheep be a sheep and it means that we have umpteen of one part and none of another now this year we can tidy that all up a little bit because we're going to do our nativity as a special film using a uh, children and adults if they want to from little stars messy church and our wider community and so we're going to have as many mary's joseph's wise men whatever we want and we'll pop it all together into a film uh, to put out nearer to christmas we're going to put that out i think we said on christmas eve I, I did think that and i suddenly thought maybe it wasn't what we said let's just check that was what we'd said so if you want to get involved in that get in touch We'll send you an email, so drop an email if you want to get more information on this, kind of kind of explaining what we would love you to do. Uh, drop us an email to Wixom's Messy Church at gmail.com. Wixom's Messy Church at gmail.com. I'll get involved in the chat. We'll put up the email address in the chat um, as we're here this morning and, and you'll finally be able to find out more. But we are going to be celebrating because what we're going to be thinking about over these next four weeks is about this season of Advent and getting ready to be prepared. And this morning, Becky, we've got somebody quite exciting coming to be with us. We have. We've got a special guest speaker today and I'm on my best behaviour because in some ways he's kind of my boss. He's your boss? Well, kind of, because I do work for them sometimes. You do, you do. do yeah, the but, but we were friends first, so I'm, I'm taking that. Okay. Okay, so our special guest speaker this morning is Bob Goody from Youth for Christ and he's going to come and share our message with us this morning. Now, before we uh, carry on waffling for too long, I think it's time we break into a song. And we've decided this morning that we'll go back to singing, come and join us in the mess. Because as we look forward to Christmas, we remember that that's exactly what Jesus did. He came and joined us in our mess. You might be tiny or you might be tall. Running around or moving at a crawl If you will listen, you will hear the call Come and join us in the mess You could be nervous or you could be proud You could be quiet or you're very loud This is a place where everyone's allowed Come and join us in the mess God is great, but life is messy, so church will never be boring. God's right there when life gets stressy. And he's stepping into our stories. Whether you're happy or you're feeling low, this is a place to let your feelings show Cause Jesus loves us and he won't let go He will join us in the mess God is great but life is messy So church will never be boring God's right there when life gets stressy And he's stepping into our story God loves every splash of color. God loves every honest prayer. God loves every searching question. God loves every joyful noise. God loves every splash of color. God loves every honest prayer. God loves every searching question. God loves Every joyful noise God is great, but life is messy The church will never be boring God's right there when life gets stressy And he's stepping into our story
Today we're lighting our first advent candle that reminds us of hope. Lord, make us one as we walk with Christ today and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to be thinking about our, our questions this morning to get us talking in our families. And if you're new to joining us, then uh, each week we just have an opportunity in our families to think about some things together to get us talking. Yep. So our first question this morning is, what does Advent mean to you? I hope you're having some great conversations uh, in your house. Don't forget, put your comments in the chat. We love to hear what you're, what you're saying, what you're discussing, um, and, and to see whether or not we're talking about the same things. Because sometimes we do, um, as the previous weeks have uh, suggested, and in other times, other conversations are going on. Um, but it's good that we're talking because that's what uh, Wixom's uh, Breakfast Church is all about. So we're going to turn to our second question. And the second question is, Christmas is going to be different this year, but what are you hoping for? Thank you. We're going to have our reading from scripture, which comes from Hebrews chapter one, verses one to three. A great reading for the start of Advent. Hebrews chapter one, verses one to three says this. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors in many ways and in many times through the prophets. But in the last days, he will speak to us through his son. He is the one through whom God created the universe, the one whom God has chosen to possess all things at the end. He reflects the brightness of God's own being and God's own glory. He is the exact likeness of God, sustaining the universe with his powerful word after achieving forgiveness for human sin. He sat down, he now sits at the right hand of God in heaven because he is the supreme being. That's what we're going to be thinking about over this Advent period. So we might come back to that reading over the coming weeks. But God comes to speak and we're going to have him come through the person of Jesus. Thanks be to God for the gift of his holy word. Well, good morning. Uh, it's great to be with you. My name is Bob Goody and I am the Mission and Evangelism Director for Youth for Christ. Pretty much means I help young people to see who Jesus is and to explore faith for themselves. 
But that is not why I am with you this morning. I am friends with Becky and Adam and the family, uh, and so I am just coming to share a little bit with you uh, as they've so nicely asked me to. So today I want to explore something very, very exciting. Did you know that even though we've got so much stuff going on, Christmas is just around the corner. We're in this period of Advent leading up to celebrating the birth of Jesus. Now today I want to explore hope. Now you might be thinking of the wrong version of hope. I don't mean hope that this Christmas I'll get lots of chocolate. You know, I'm, I'm quite excited for chocolate. It's one of my favourite things. But that, that's a hope that, oh, maybe if, if, if it's all right and if someone's listening to me, I might just get this. Oh, I hope everything works out I, and I hope this. And you, you know, that kind of hope where we've got no real control. But we, we just think, oh, it will be so great if. I don't want to talk about that hope. I want to talk about a hope that the Bible talks about. Because, you know, the Bible is an incredible book. It's full of so much hope. Not hope that we can sort of put a vague trust in and go, oh, I wonder if. It's a hope that we can go, this is so true. And I can't wait to see this worked out. You know, in Hebrews 11, which is one of the books of the New Testament, it says this in verse 1. To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for. To be certain of the things that we cannot see. You know, have faith is to be sure of the things that we hope for. But what are we hopeful for? Now for me, I hope that one day the world will be a perfect place once more. What is God's hope? God's hope is that he will be in relationship with us. We, I believe that God created everything within this world. And that he longs to be friends with us once more. And so what is this hope we can be so sure of? It is the hope that God is still there. God is still in control and God is desperately seeking and searching for us. But what does it mean? Well, it reminds me of Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. And it's a word that is, is used to describe Jesus before he was born. It goes back to a story which is one of my favourite stories, especially around Christmas time, around some shepherds in a field. Now, why do I love this? I love it because it's not about rich people. It's not about famous people and kings and queens and people that I've got no chance of ever being or coming across. But it's about everyday, ordinary people. Now, these shepherds were quite downtrodden. They were working the night shift out in the field. Like, I don't know about you, but I go, I go for a walk most nights with my wife. But um, when we're out, it's freezing. I would not want to stop and, and look out over a field for the next eight hours. But these shepherds 2,000 years ago were sat out in a field. Like they would have been wrapped up warm, you know, <laughs> because that's what they do. And these shepherds were there to look after their sheep, to protect them, to keep them from harm. But you know that one night, they were hoping there was more to life than this. And in the middle of the darkness, of the cold, of the looking out, of the, you know, the, the wolves in the distance that are heading towards these sheep. But there, in the middle of it all, when there didn't seem to be much hope for anything better, an angel appears in the sky. Now this angel appears to the shepherds, you know, the normal people, the everyday people, the people that, that feel a bit downtrodden, that doing the everyday average jobs like, like me and you. They didn't appear to the rich, to the famous. The first people that these angels appeared to were these shepherds in a field. And as these, this angel appeared to them, the shepherds, they were scared, you know, the sheep were like, ah! and, and running off. But the angel said, don't be afraid. I've come to give you some great news. News that will be for all the earth. Tonight in the town of Bethlehem, a new king has been born. A saviour for all the world. He is Emmanuel, 
God with us. And you know the first people to meet this newborn baby, this Jesus this Jesus that we talk about today in churches all over the world. The same Jesus that is changing lives day in, day out, minute by minute, second by second. The first people to meet him, God in human form, was the shepherds, the lowly. Now that fills me with so much hope. That God isn't just interested in rich and famous. Yes, he is. But he's interested in the everyday, you and me. Now my hope this Christmas, my hope that I have out of this Bible is that God is with us. We can be sure of that. God wants to give us love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. He wants to be with us, to walk alongside us. And that one day we have the hope that all will be well. There'll be no more tears, no more suffering. But God will be with his people forever and ever. And there will be perfection once more. But in this moment, as we head towards Christmas, as some of us are going through tough times, as some of us are going through great times too, we have a hope. A hope that is sure and certain that God is with us. God will never leave us, he will never forsake us. That he wants to be in a relationship with each and every one of us and walk with us to give us peace when we need peace, to give us strength when we need strength. But for now we have the sure and certain hope that God is with us. So what are you hoping for this Advent, this Christmas? It might be the chocolate, but it might actually be that your hope this year is that you need peace in a situation. You need strength to face the next day. And I know that God can grant you that strength. All we need to do is ask. So let me pray for you and for me. So Father God, thank you that you are so good to us, that you are God with us in the form of Jesus, that you came to be with all people, not just the rich, but the everyday that we are all loved, that we are all cherished and perfect and precious to you. So Lord, help us to put our hope and our trust in you because you are so good. You have great things for us. Give us your peace. Give us your strength. May we find our rest and our hope in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you all. Very short, very sweet. hope it uh, speaks to you today. Enjoy Christmas. We do not sit alone. We do not stand alone We do not walk alone We do not dance alone Unseen, unveiled Emmanuel, Emmanuel our God is with us there Emmanuel, Emmanuel Our God is with us there We do not work alone We do not cook alone We do not drive alone do not clean alone Unmade, uncaged Emmanuel, Emmanuel Our God is with us there Emmanuel, Emmanuel Our God is with us us there Word made flesh this 
This is Jesus present tense. This is Jesus word made flesh. This is Jesus. We do not eat alone. We do not sleep alone. We do not live alone. We will not die alone. Unknown, unleashed. Him. A great new song there from uh, Andy Flanagan, uh, reminding us that God is with us, picking up on that excellent message that we've just had from our friend uh, Bob Goody. Thank you very much indeed, Bob, for uh, joining us. May God bless you in, in all that you seek to do. We've got other friends over the coming weeks coming to, to join us uh, to spice things up, but that was an amazing uh, first uh conversation uh, from Bob getting us started on our Advent sermon series well our first breakfast church of Advent is coming uh, to a close but just to say that if uh, anything that Bob has said has touched you and you want to to chat to Becky or I then we'd love to have that uh, conversation with you get in touch uh, do get in touch privately if you don't want to say publicly but do uh, get in touch and as I say, later today, keep an eye out on social media because we'll be replaying uh, Bob's message uh, again. So if you know anybody that would benefit from hearing Bob's message, then let me encourage you to go and encourage them to look at the social media uh, later today. Well, our time is coming to an end. We are going to finish, as we always do, by praying God's blessing, praying God's blessing on us as we go into another week, which for many of us will see our lives change again as a result of new lockdown restrictions. But we go, as Bob reminded us, with that Advent hope that God is with us. So let's pray as we go out into this week. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are a God who is with us. Lord, as we walk through this Advent season, keep us ever mindful of your presence. Keep us ever mindful that you are with us. In the times this week when we go through stuff and we're going, where are you? Remind us of your presence. As we go through this Advent season, remind us of who we are awaiting. Remind us that we are awaiting you as the Christ child, the one who comes to save the world. Father, give us your Advent hope. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that at your first coming, you came to visit us in great humility. May we recognise who you are in your coming among us. And Lord, as we go into this week, may we know your blessing upon us. Because you are Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you are who you are. And I pray a blessing upon my friends this week. May God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. <laughs>